You have just heard read to you Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 1 through 11. The theme for today is the prisoners moving forward. Cornelius Michael Anderson III and a friend decided to rob a Burger King manager while he was making a deposit at the bank. They decided to rob this manager at gunpoint. Cornelius and his friend were eventually caught. He posted bail, but he was eventually sentenced, found guilty, and sentenced to 13 years for robbery by the Missouri State. Cornelius' team filed an appeal, but they lost. He was told to go home and wait, and someone would pick him up to go to prison. And that's exactly what he did. He waited. Now, this is where things get interesting. One day turned into two days, turned into three days. Days turned into weeks. Weeks turned into months. And months turned into years. Michael decided to dissociate himself from all of his former friends. He joined the church. He gave his life to Christ. He started his own construction business. He got married. He had children. Michael did what jail is supposed to do. He got rehabilitated. He completely turned his life around. This is where we enter the biblical text, interestingly. The people of God, through wars, had become prisoners. They had fought and lost, and as such, they were captured, and how and where they lived were dictated. There was a sentence that hung over them, and they had served time. They were not free to come and go as they pleased. They lived in captivity. They lived in a land not considered their home. They lived with the loss of loved ones. They lived with the loss of their homeland, such as the migrants that find themselves at the cold back door of the United States of America. They lived with the loss of their freedom. There is something about this type of captivity that drains one spiritually, emotionally, and physically. There are two types of prison. One is physical, as we hear through the Israelites, the clicks of the chains and witness these Israelites in captivity. But there is another kind of prison that is mental, that is located in our brain, such as what Michael, who was Burger King manager, experienced. Malcolm X noted this distinction of a prison related to our thoughts. While some of us have been to jail, Many more of us who sit in this congregation have perhaps been imprisoned by our mind. We have felt held to beliefs and thoughts, people and places, ideologies and theologies that have kept us locked up. Sadly, the church has been a centerpiece for locking people up. We have taught folks, if you don't live life and you don't do this and you don't check this off your checklist, you're gonna get kicked out of heaven. We have presented a judgmental God so that some never feel like they can live quite measure up to God's expectation, a prison of the mind. Paul Scanlon talks about a night out with his colleagues around the dinner table. One of the guys at the table begins telling a joke that he knows immediately is going to be racial. You've been there when the air feels stale and that moment is awkward. And you want to say something, but you don't want to make the other person feel awkward. A prisoner of sorts to what the person is about to say. Afraid to speak up. He knew in a split second in the early part of the joke he was either going to be a prisoner or he was going to say something. He knew what it was like to say nothing because he had experienced that kind of setting before where he sat around, he listened to the joke, and said nothing. No one else was saying anything either. But Paul finds his voice and says, I don't think 
this joke is one I want to hear. I don't like the way it's going. I think it's going to be at the expense of people of color. Would you mind not telling it, or I could leave the table? The guy doesn't tell the joke. Being a mental prisoner means sometimes you get included to clubs not everyone else is invited to. Sometimes being a prisoner means you're quiet when you should speak up. Sometimes being a prisoner means you are loyal to people and institutions even though their way of doing things goes against what you believe. Being a prisoner means we go along to get along even when an injustice is being done before our eyes. Being a prisoner means we feel the absence of choice and we experience isolation and lockdown. Being a prisoner is when we bind to something that does not serve humanity well, doesn't serve us. Being a prisoner is when you are chained to something or someone. There is a physical prison, which we've referred to when we talk about the Israelites today, but there is a prison worse than bars, worse than being taken away from your homeland. There's a prison of the mind. Years ago, a, par a parishioner came to me and confided she had done some things in her life that she wasn't proud of. In other words, she had lived her life. She had taken some roads that were rough. She had enjoyed some of that ride, but there was violence mixed in as well. Someone from her past had found her and had propositioned her to do something they wanted her to do. And if she did not do it, they had digital recordings of her. Those tapes were damaging to her new life, and she did not want them to be revealed. She felt like a prisoner, and she wanted to know what, what should she do. Most of the time when someone comes to me, my job is not to tell them what to do, but to support them in their faith and courage to do what they believe is the right thing to do for their life. In that spirit, I shared with the lady Make peace, make peace with whatever is contained in those tapes. Make peace with it. If you acquiesce to this person, I shared, you will forever be a prisoner. And if you refuse to be in prison, you risk those you love knowing a piece of you. You'd rather they not know. But you, my dear, will be free. The woman found the courage in herself to tell the person she would not acquiesce to what they were trying to blackmail her with. And that was all that was in her control to do. She gained her freedom. And while it doesn't always turn out this way, the person never released the digital recording. We are called to a walk of faith more than a walk by sight. After a period of time, years, God sent a prophet to let the Israelites know, time serve, a new day is coming. For now, I need you to experience my comfort and my peace. I know that you all have suffered greatly. I know that you are harmed. I know a few of y'all are walking around with PTSD. I know you've been through a lot. I know that you're struggling. I know this was one of the most difficult things you've ever faced. And I know I need you to know that I am sending comfort. Right here in the first few passages that Ina Grace read so eloquently, comfort, oh comfort, my people, says our God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid. There's a fiber artist group in Chicago making hats and scarves and mittens for migrants. And it may just be me, but sometimes I can tell when an item has been made from home, and it warms my heart to see a migrant with a small act of kindness on their head or on their hands. I just believe whether someone was born in Chi-Town or China or Venezuela, you show kindness when someone is down. 
Whether they are purple or blue, you show love when someone is going through. Whether they carry a gender identity card or are non-binary, love is the door. Young on the journey or not so young, people need comfort. Whether living indoors or outdoors, we can share the love of Christ with those we encounter through a kind word or a kind gesture or through advocacy and law-abiding peaceful protest. Look to the east, look to the west, look to the south or look to the north, and you will see people who are in need of comfort and peace. If you're humble enough, it might even be you. When people have been held captive, when they come from afar, been imprisoned by their mind, when they've been on a journey for a while, when they've heard of enough no's, when they've had enough doors slammed in their face, when they have battle cry scars, they have served their time and need a word of comfort, need peace. I began this story today with Michael. Michael was sentenced to 13 years, but no one ever came to get him. On the day Michael should have been released, guess what? Missouri State realized their clerical error. They realized the guy that was supposed to have served 13 years had been out for 13 years. This clerical error had been made, and so it was when it was time to release him, and they realized he's been out for 13 years, they sent a squat team out to get him. After 13 years of being free, it was time for him to serve his time. The SWAT team came out on a morning. He was fixing breakfast for his three-year-old with an automatic weapon and hauled Michael off to prison. But something happened. People in the community had seen how Michael had changed his life around. There was an outcry from the public, free Michael. Guess what? Michael's wife, who he was married to, didn't even know that Michael had held up the guy at Burger King. So his wife, along with other people, filed petitions to have Michael released. Amazingly, Michael had achieved what the purpose of prison really is for in the first place. He had become a changed person. After serving nine months in jail, the judge finally granted Michael his freedom with no parole. The judge tells Michael to move forward and continue to be the good man he is to his family, his community, and business. The judge says to him, I see no purpose in keeping you in jail. Remember, there is a physical jail, but far more serious than the physical jail is the mental jail. You have served your time. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this season of Advent that calls us not to rush, but to wait. We thank you last Sunday for the reflections provided there of the beggar. And we thank you today for the reflections of the prisoner. No matter what the sentence is, there comes a period where we have served, where guilt needs to be released, and where people need to move forward. This comfort you provided to your people, Lord, I pray this comfort for our community as well. May your peace rest over us like a beautiful sunshine day. Comfort your people, Lord. Comfort your people. And Lord, keep moving us forward. In Jesus' name, amen.